Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at an article that came across my desk titled, Bateman Headlines, a list of Ravens underperformers. Now the article goes on to talk about a few guys that underperformed in the 2023 season for the Baltimore Ravens, but Bateman's name is in the headlines. Uh, the article is by Anthony, and I'll spell his last name because I can't pronounce it, L-I-C-C-I-A-R-D-I. -I. Um, and it was posted yesterday. So. The subheading of it, it says, the Baltimore Ravens exceeded every expectation in the regular season, only to fall short in the AFC Championship game. Which players fail farthest below their expectations in 2023? So it goes on to talk about, you know, to summarize the game from last Sunday, which seemed like forever ago, when the Ravens lost to the Chiefs and how they lost to the Chiefs and whatnot. And so it poses the question, who are Baltimore's biggest underperformers of the season? Now, the picture right up under there is Rashad Bateman. And we all have, you know, our quarrels and grips and gripes about Rashad Bateman and his underperformance. Now, do I think he underperformed? By numbers-wise, yes. But if you look at the scatter plot of individuals that got open and the most separation they got, his name is in the area with the good receivers in the NFL, the really good receivers. Now, he didn't get the attempts or the targets or whatnot that they got, but as far as that metric and saying that guys get open, Rashard Bateman is one of those guys that got open. Didn't get the ball, but he got open. Let's go on and talk about what the article says. So the first name listed, obviously, was Rashard Bateman because he's the headline in it. It says it's been a tumultuous start to the receiver Rashard Bateman's Ravens career. That only continued in 2023 where he posted just 56 targets, 32 catches, 367 yards, and only 16 games and one touchdown. Uh, Bateman's progress is much of a source of optimism as his first round pedigree, but that draft capital comes with expectations. And we all know, we all know, when you draft in the first round, we expect you to produce. We expect you to produce. Most of the time, we expect you to produce right now. You know, it's, it's rare that you get a first round project unless it's like a quarterback. But for the most part, running backs, receivers, uh, any other skill positions that are first round picks, we're looking for you to produce ASAP. And this will be year four for Rashad Bateman because we're getting to the point where you want to see if you want to do that fifth-year option. I Meaning he just finished year three, year four will be coming up this next season. So now they got to wonder if they're going to do fifth-year option with him. And based off the what he's put on tape so far, I think it's going to be a tough decision. It's going to be a tough decision for DaCosta and Brass to have to make. All right, and said instead he struggles, his struggles generated the fifth most receptions and six most yards and touchdowns on the Ravens, meaning he had the fifth most catches out of all the receivers on the team and the sixth most yards out of all the receivers on the team. That's why I think running backs included too. So that, that ain't just all the right receivers. That's running backs included also. Um, next up, they talked about Baltimore's inconsistency spread to the offensive line. And so the first guy they mentioned was a guy that I always pick fun at. I always pick fun at. This John Simpson. It said guard John Simpson was the Ravens' worst offensive lineman. Of the 52 linemen with at least 1,100 snaps in 2023, only the Chiefs tackle, Jawan Thomas, committed more penalties. And we know Thomas had all those false start penalties to even start the season. So basically, he was the most penalized offensive lineman in the NFL next to Jawan Thomas. Jawan Taylor, I'm sorry. Jawan Taylor. All right. It says, in a league where offensive lines were so frequently defined by their weakest link, Simpson was the, at times the anchor, meaning, yes, he got penalized a lot, but Simpson had spells where he played some damn good football. Uh, the first half versus the Chiefs, other than the sack, I think Simpson played some really good football. So, And there were spells where they made it to where he can do the things that he's good at, like pulling, um, you know, and having help on key players. But I think the Chiefs, figured out that, hey, he's the weakest link. Let's figure out a way to get him one-on-ones with, with Chris Jones, and it kind of worked to their favor later on in the game. But early in that game, he was he was holding his own, and certain throughout spurts in the season, he held his own too. But you don't expect that from a guy that's making next to nothing. You know, he's a disappointment because of the play, but when you get to the second guy on this list, you really see a disappointment. The second old lineman they talked about on this one, 
It's Ronnie Stanley. I say Ronnie Stanley was an underperformer for the Ravens. It may come in a different shape than Bateman or Simpson, both lesser players than Stanley. But in comparison to lofty expectations set for him, he fell completely short. It says Stanley, like Simpson, fell prone to the penalty issue in 2023. He committed 10 penalties, the 13th most among, among linemen with at least 688 snaps. Now, the 12 names ahead of him, only one played fewer snaps than Ronnie Stanley. So, and I think what they're trying to say is because Simpson and Bateman don't make a whole lot of money, there's not a, a huge expectation on them, but Ronnie Stanley has almost like a $20 million salary, so the expectation for him is through the roof, and for him to perform the way he performed with that dollar amount attached to his name, that's where the underperforming comes in at. And so I'll link this article in the uh, comment section, but that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you guys for coming through. Tell me what you think about this article and anybody else you feel like underperformed for the Baltimore Ravens in the 2023 season and drop it in the comment section and we'll talk about it. So that's what I got for you, man. Remember, peace and love.